for that introduction this morning. I am indeed that general manager. Don't all boo. Um, Margaret is my lead nurse colleague. Alison is one of our patient reps on our Neurology Voices group. And Caroline is another patient rep on the group. I get, if I can get the button to work, um, I get the slightly boring introductory bit, so we'll do that fast. Before we get into the meat of the presentation, I need to give you just a very brief introduction to where Neurology Voices came from and how did we get where we, where we are today. Essentially, a few years ago, there was um, a lot of work done, actually, at the time to develop clinical standards for neurology services across Scotland. 104 standards, fair to say, I don't think anywhere in Scotland meets all of them yet, but what that did lead to was a two-year improvement, improvement programme with Healthcare Improvement Scotland so that boards could work together with colleagues and patient and carer reps to improve the services we provide for um, neurology patients. We were very fortunate as part of that two-year improvement work to have the opportunity to receive training for our neurology um, voices reps and that training was offered by the Neurological Alliance of Scotland to all boards. So far in Scotland, eight out of 14 boards have received training. Locally, for our group, we came into being um, July 12. The training at that time, which Margaret and I attended, involved nine patient and carer reps, and we're delighted to say that seven of those reps are still very active in the group. A couple of our patient reps, regrettably, have had to withdraw, temporarily at least, because of their, their own health condition. On the group from the service um, is Margaret and myself and one of our consultant neurology colleagues and we meet every six weeks, so this is a regular forum for discussion about our service, every six weeks or so in an accessible venue in the Southern General Hospital in Glasgow. The aims of the Neurology Voices Group, the first aim is of the whole programme is to connect patients, carers and NHS professionals in improving and developing our local neurological health services. It's all about, and we've heard some of this this morning already, empowering those with lived experience, exhibit A and B to my left and right, um, patients and carers to get involved in helping us provide our services better, improve our services in ways which will give most benefit to the patients. From a personal perspective, as a general manager, I don't necessarily get daily contact with patients and their families. Often, in fact, my contact would be when dealing with complaints as opposed to um, the daily interaction many of you in the room are, are able to have. So for me, this is a particularly um, a positive experience where we get to sit down and have discussions which is based on real life experiences of our services. We're in a fortunate position. We can work with these colleagues to actually improve what we do and what we deliver um, in our local team. I'm now going to hand you over to Margaret to tell you a bit more about the work of the group. Thank you. Hi, my name is Margaret, as Susan's already said. Um, I'm going to speak a bit about, well, first of all, what, what mattered to us, and looking at that from the patient perspective and also from the service perspective. From the patient um, perspective, following our initial discussions, it came, um, there was a few things came up. Patient information was a, a huge issue for patients and a whole lot of issues came up around that, you know, sort of what information we give, when we give that information, the format of that information, whether it's spoken, electronic, written information. Um, our, um, our patient reps told us very early on that signposting was hugely important to them, pointing them in the direction of other services and, you know, making sure that they got all the right information at the right time. Um, the role of our clinical nurse specialist was discussed at that point. Um, and interestingly, I think it, it became obvious that perhaps what we assumed was the information that people required at certain times wasn't, in fact, what, what, what they were looking for. Um, discussion of um, patients' personal experiences at the time of diagnosis, again, threw up some quite um, unexpected and, and some obvious things. Obviously, the information, again, was a big thing. The environment, the time taken to give information at diagnosis. Um, signposting, again, was a huge issue. But really importantly, I think what came out, certainly to me at that point, was the, um, the impact, the, the wider impact that, that had on sort of personal 
family, social, financial issues, that perhaps we as, as health professionals um, be focused more on the, the initial impact of the disease or the diagnosis, but when in fact patients were telling us it was much more than that, and often their, their the initial concern perhaps was financial or, or, to, or you know, who's going to care for family or the sort of wider issues. Um, and then managing the chronic as well as the acute phase of the condition. And I think at the early stages, it's very easy to focus on the, the diagnosis and the acute issues. But obviously, for a lot of patients with neurological conditions, it's, you know, it's a long term. You know, they're in for the long term. Um, it's an ongoing um, journey that they're facing. There's a long connection with the service. Um, and self-management, um, how to access services, how to re-access services once you know conditions have stabilised and further down the line. That was all hugely important to, to the patients that we spoke to. Um, from a service perspective, um, uh, we in, so quite quickly decided, you know, a review of our outpatient facilities. Most of neurology is carried out in an outpatient environment, and that's where most you know, people will have their connection. Obviously, we have acute inpatient facilities, but for most people, a lot of their time will be in our outpatient um, department. Um, and I'll speak a wee bit more about that later. Um, involvement in development of the new neurology website. We have, a, a, as, as I've stated, a neurology website, and the patient input has been, from our point of view, very valuable and helped to shape that and just to, to give us some really useful information and, and how, how that should look, what it should contain, how you access it, simple things like the language, the accessibility. Um, membership of the board's neurology improvement group has been another... Um, uh, I think a real bonus um, for all of us. We have got um, um, patient involvement, as Susan has already said, and that's an ongoing sort of continuous improvement in, in our um, neurology service. And as I say, that has that has been a, a particular, I think, valuable um, outcome of this. And then you know we looked at redesign of our outpatient. Um, survey we have an existing outpatient survey which we've used for, for time and the the patient group's been very very involved in looking at how we rejig that and just get the information that actually might be valuable to us um, so you know what is actually important to ask of patients what do we do with the information that we get and and, and recently you know looking at the actual format of it as well as the questions you know looking at different methods of collecting that through tablets and you know various various methods so that has that has been very useful. Um, I think what quickly became obvious at the beginning, as I say, we, although we may come from different angles, the, the goals were very similar. Um, it was very, it was really invaluable to communicate from a, from a service perspective, um, and I think that's come back from our, our patients as well, um, to really communicate with them out with a clinical setting and at a time when they're not involved in either an acute episode or you know, an outpatient um, review. So uh, that, that has, been, has been particularly useful. Um, and I think the priorities and the concerns, perhaps, of um, the service provider and the patients are, are, are quite different at times. Um, now, a little bit more about the review of our outpatient facilities, because that's really one of our um, major um, drives and achievements really over the last couple of years. To start off, I mean, we, we quickly recognised, I think, as, um, as a service, that we needed to do some improvement there. And the first thing we did was a, a joint walk around of our outpatients department. And I did that along with, well, Caroline and Alison were both involved, and um, a couple of our other patient voices. And, and what we found was really very interesting. The, the, the department's functional, just. Um, there was a lot of issues, right from actually um, when you arrive in the hospital site, get into the building, the entrance, the curb, parking, signage, the doors, the seating, the waiting areas. So there was lots of... Um, issues that were thrown up during that walk around, which were very useful to us. And... Um, seating, the waiting areas, the whole, the whole, the whole lot, very, very valuable. Um, and we discovered that um, communication and, and, you know, a fresh set of eyes was very, very useful. And I'll maybe just come back, if I can, to our first slide. I don't know how many of you actually noticed it. And if, you're, if any of you could maybe tell me what was on that first slide. Did anyone recognise it? It was the Waverley, yeah. And the reason the Waverley's there is we've heard a lot about listening to patients and I think we all think we listen, but I think from my point of view, the other thing is maybe to look and see a bit more of what's round about you. And interestingly enough, um, 
when we did our walk round, we, we were discussing you know, how patients pass their time in the department, and obviously we try and minimise weight, but there are times when patients have a prolonged wait, and we have nothing to really keep them occupied. There was, ve there was not very useful literature, there wasn't a television, there was no music, but there was a ship in a box. And the interesting thing was, you know, that there's, there's a model of the Waverley and the outpatients high up where you can't really see it, but, you know, if you struggle, you can. I have worked in that department for a long time, quite a lot of years. I've never seen it. <laughs> and I was amazed that there was a ship in outpatients, and that was it. <laughs> Caroline <laughs> pointed it out to me. And it just taught me a lot, I think, about looking at, looking at your service and looking at what is actually there and, and recognising that you don't always see what's right in front of you. Um, there were some opportunic, um, opportunistic improvements made. We, we've quickly done things such as, you know, um, putting in a drop curb at our entrance, which surprisingly there wasn't when we started out. And um, we've made some useful improvements to our patient toilets within the department, much to Caroline and Alison's great delight. Um, they, were, they were really actually good. They ticked all the boxes and they met all the criteria, unless you had poor balance, poor vision, poor mobility, or perhaps um, any other neurological <laughs> um, symptom. And they certainly didn't agree or meet the standards of, of our patients, so that's been addressed. Um, some longer term improvements that we have identified, we were looking very much at patient flow within the department, the use of the space we have, um, communication, signage, um, we have had um, a visit to the Anne Rowling Centre in Edinburgh for some inspiration, and that was very, very valuable. Um, we are looking at, um, as I say, our, our information and, and basically looking at all aspects of our service. And if anyone would like a model of the Waverley, <laughs> they can perhaps send their bids to Susan Walker, <laughs> General Manager. <laughs> Thank you. And I'll hand over to Caroline. <laughs> So. Well, thank you very much. My name is Caroline, and as Sven said, I'm one of the neurological voices. Um, and I hope you'll see from what we've spoken about already that this uh, programme, at least in Glasgow, is very much going in the right direction, although unquestionably it's still at a very early stage, um, although we've been going a few years. Um, but what makes it work, and why, if indeed this far, it is indeed working? Well, I think, you're, perhaps not unsurprisingly, we're saying it's very much the people and how they work together as a team. Now, that team has partly been enabled to come together and indeed to work thanks to that original training given to us as voices by the national programme. And that training not only put us together as a team and uh, made, us, made us a team, but also gave us uh, a perspective on the NHS and also made us understand the number of areas of conditions, about our conditions that were in common, the number of common experiences, the common issues we encountered, not just in the South in general, uh, but across the whole of our experiences of the health board. Um, all of that helped set us up, but what has allowed us to continue? What has meant that we've been able to go on and hopefully to deliver some of the, the, aims that we, the aims we set out in the beginning? Well, I think it's the good leadership. Unquestionably, therefore, I want to say it's very much Susan and Margaret that have made this happen uh, to continue. Not only did they make sure that we had accessible rooms in the first instance and gave us an early structure to those meetings, but also they've kept us on track. They've made us constantly aware of where we can actually contribute as voices and highlighted where we can be of use to the NHS. But all of that has also worked because we've all got a commitment <laughs> to making sure this makes a difference, <coughs> pardon me, actually at the coalface. Make sure practical, tangible differences happen. It's real local delivery of local issues by as a consequence of local understanding and local use. But those meetings themselves are very much um, a lively and uh, debating environment. They're mutual respect, there's a lot of openness, there's patience, there's a willingness to listen to the experiences. Now the slide here says to listen to hear about patient experience. But I think also what's very important is that we as voices are very much there to listen to the voices as, and the experience of the staff as well. And it's a partnership, that's the way that these things have been able to be moved forward. And similarly, although of course it's vital that people are listening to the personal lived experiences of us, of the patients and indeed of the carers who are also represented on that um, voices group, it's also important for us to listen to the, the staff and the experiences you all have in using those environments and delivering those services. Now the last comment on there sounds a bit sort of facetious and trite, biscuits. 
And here I should probably thank Susan in front of 500 members of her, her colleagues for Marks, Brian, and Spencer, Marks and Spencer's <laughs> biscuits. Um, every session, for the net, every, every six weekly meeting, we have biscuits. Um, but it is important, it illustrates that informality that is in the room, informality of that meeting. And the, the, as a consequence, there's an environment where we are sharing views and we are therefore comfortable about talking about things, sometimes which are um, somewhat a little distressing. And I go back to that toilet. It was dignity de defying. Um, we had to talk about how the door didn't shut properly, never mind the fact if you had poor balance, you couldn't necessarily sit down safely. So there were things like that that have been helped by having that informality and biscuits kind of illustrates that. So that's perhaps what has made it work. But what have we actually achieved? Well, perhaps you've had some ideas of what we already achieved. But one of the biggest achievements we've got is we've got continued commitment to carry on working together. And as Susan said, seven out of the nine of us are very, very much still in the room on a regular six-weekly basis. And two people who aren't able to be there are not through lack of commitment, they're through their own health issues of their own or of their families. But there's also lively discussion happening in each instance. There's a real energy still in the room when we're having those meetings. And we've made progress on all those tasks we noted down the first few meetings. We have progressed in some shape or form, some of them almost to the conclusion. There's action been taken in response to all that patient feedback. We now have that drop curb, which means that Alison, when she gets out of the taxi, doesn't then have to go 200 yards down the road to climb up the curb, actually at the point where the zebra crossing is, to come back up the road and up the pavement again to get into the neurology. We now have a toilet that's not dignity defying. We now have a patient survey, which actually is understandable. We now do have a, a website which has con areas on it which actually are the things which people were looking for. There's much more to do, don't get me wrong, but I think we've made significant progress in what we've already had as our aims and our targets. And perhaps the biggest thing we've got is that staff and patients are working together. It's not just staff working with patients, it's very much patients working with the staff to improve those facilities. And it's quite nice to think that we're doing things right and we think we're doing not bad, but it's even better to find out that some of that's been recognised on a national or a and I was going to say international then, on a national or local scale, on a national scale perhaps by being invited to come along to this, on a local scale because I know one of the things that we, we have been successful is being awarded, and I've got to look down here, the Involving Patients Award as part of Glasgow's board facing the Futures Together programme. So on that basis, hopefully that means it's not just us that thinks we're doing okay, but a few other people do as well. At that point, I'd like to hand over now to Alison, who I think has got some of the quotes about how the meetings themselves have gone. My name is Alison, and I'm one of the neurological voices. The, the quotes that we have, so I'm looking at you, but I know you're looking at are quite self-explanatory, but mine for today is being a neurological voice is really valuable. It gives me a chance, an opportunity to take my life living with the neurological disorder and my experiences of using a neurological service. And it gives me a chance to explain to people that actually run the service, and that can help make a difference to the people that use the service and to me. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you.